I think it's really hard for people to understand what it's actually like to go through IVF. Yes. I'm Nicola. I'm Hugh. And this is our IVF story. I'm Australian and my husband Hugh is Korean and we live in Seoul, South Korea. We blog about our intercultural life together and we've been married since... 2012? Yeah, 2012. I found out that I was infertile after I'd had an operation to have cysts removed. So this was in Korea and I have endometriosis. So they were removing uh, the cysts and then afterwards when I was recovering in hospital, the doctor as he's doing his rounds just like stood over me and said, you can't have children and like that was it. And there was even people behind him, like you know the, I don't know what they are, the, the residents behind him and like that I was given this devastating news and then you weren't even there because my phone had broken and you had to go get a phone and I just remember crying for hours mm. like it was <laughs> it was so traumatic like like just to be told that and not to be given any sort of follow-up of like maybe you can do IVF or maybe you can do that I don't like in my head like what so I can't have baby I can't. Because we're still planning to in a few years. But still, I heard that news. Then it was kind of depressing. Like so, I don't know what to say. Really, mm. um. And it wasn't just my endometriosis that was causing my infertility. I actually have a bunch of things that is wrong with me, and there may even be something from when I was a baby and I had an operation. It's the doctor just we 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 found a, a better doctor and yeah she sort of gave me the list of things that are wrong with me but at the top it's endometriosis um, which you know is quite a common thing so I think a lot of women are going through this but you don't tell people you're infertile like it you know it's not something that generally comes up in uh, conversations not even like you don't you don't want to go around talking about it that much because it's such a private personal pain. Okay, for the past two nights since I started these injections, Hugh has done it for me because the first night I started crying and couldn't do it to myself, but he's out tonight, so this is the first time that I have to do it myself. I'm kind of glad that I've put on weight and I've got this belly fat now because I think it's easier doing it straight into fat. Fainting is my biggest fear at the moment. I don't want to faint. It was really scary because like starting IVF and before we started and knowing that we were going to, like it's scary not knowing what is going to happen because if you try it and it doesn't work and you keep trying and it doesn't work that's so difficult but then actually IVF even though you know you can know how it works it's still this unknown thing that you really don't know that much about and that's what can be really scary Just, I don't like looking at it. I don't like seeing the needle going in. I don't care how many needles other people give me. I don't like doing it myself. Two weeks of this. For at least the first round. I mean, who knows how many rounds we're gonna have to do with this. Don't think I'm very good at this. So we haven't been married for quite a long time. So mm. always from the beginning, People mm. ask us like, when are you going to have a baby? When are you going to have a baby? Mm. Oh, it's time to have a baby. Mm. But you know, some couples, not only us, like so many people, they might try really hard, really hard, but you know, somehow they couldn't. Mm. 
then that's really painful, you know. Yeah. It's we we try, we are trying. What I, could you do? I feel like the conversation around having babies is controlled by people that don't have problems with their fertility. Because when you do have problems or you understand that, you don't ask people that. But people can just be so insensitive and not think about how many people might be going through something like this. Then always, like, sometimes not even just asking you when you're going to have a baby, just like telling you, you need to have a baby, hurry up and have a baby. And you have no idea what that couple might be going through. And I just, and this is not just in Korea, in Australia as well, mm. most countries, people ask this type of question, when are you going to have a baby? And you just don't know what somebody is going through and so I just don't think it should be asked all the time like that. How did it go? Um, okay, so the, the bad news today is that uh, my ovarian function is not good. She said actually it's really bad. Um, so that was not good to hear. Um, she said the good thing at the moment is I'm still young you know it's not like I'm, I'm 40 trying to do this I'm still younger than that so that's the good thing but I mean it's unlikely the first time is going to work and so they have to do a different type after this one because yeah there's some extra complications from having endometriosis and and my ovarian function shouldn't say anything about your sperm so i'm guessing your sperm's okay i guess so okay. sometimes you feel like you have to tell somebody or you're pressured into a situation where you have to say that you have to do ivf and so you've just revealed something you know quite personal about what you're going through or we have to do IVF or we're going through IVF and a lot of people don't even really know what it is and so you've shared something and really the right response from people should be like you know oh I hope it goes really well I know that can be hard you know I'll be thinking of you but so many people are just like what's IVF and it, how do you try to get across how difficult this is not only the physical aspect of going through IVF but the emotional how many years it has been to get to this point the disappointment the pain and then when people don't even understand what it is but you've still got to have this normal conversation with them and you can't get upset with them and you can't show your anger Ugh. These early morning hospital visits are really messing with our schedule. But you know what? A baby's going to be messing with our schedule, so we can't really complain. Look how puffy my face is. Oh, taxi's coming. Yeah, they think it's easy mm. way to do it, mm. but it's not easy. Really, not easy. Mm. Because I don't know other people's situation, but my situation. I had to go to the hospital every single time Nicole has to go. Mm. So I saw all the process, mm. you know, and it's really, really difficult. You know how involved and difficult it is. I think even people that, you know, they have a rough idea of what IVF is, they still have this very like shortened condensed idea of what it is oh you get the woman's egg and you get the men's sperm and you put them together and then you put it back in and bam the woman is pregnant all done you know but it's it's really not like that at all it is way more involved process you have ovulation induction and then you have the egg retrieval and then the sperm retrieval and then the fertilization and then the embryo transfer and even that saying those things is still such a shortened version of like what you actually have to go through okay she said two to three eggs now so i'm going to come back tomorrow mm -hmm. so not doing the retrieval on monday but tuesday now so was hoping it would be better news today but it's not really but, okay back again tomorrow
at the beginning when the nurse told me I need to inject myself like every night for two weeks I was just in shock of like I have to do it in my mind I thought oh you're going to the hospital and someone's just going to give you a needle but then the nurse is like no you need to inject into your belly every night and it's like two to three needles and so she taught me how to do it and then the first few nights you did it for me and then I sometimes you wouldn't be there and so I had to do it and I really <laughs> I really didn't like doing it like the actual needles not that painful but it makes you like your belly swell up and doing so many needles every single day like you just yeah you get bruises and you get bloated and the hormones make you feel horrible this is how big my belly is at the moment so here bruises from injections this was another injection this morning it's red this is this is to stop other symptoms and stuff from the other stuff of like the hyperovulation. But look how look how bloated it is. It's quite it's quite sore. The point of the injections is to make you ovulate because they can't just take one egg out. They need to take a bunch of eggs out. So they've got to make you ovulate, and they've got to uh, the eggs are got to be in the follicle and they've got to check that so you go in to have like a vaginal ultrasound several times <laughs> during the week so they're checking how many eggs are coming down and you feel bloated you feel like emotional like you're sore like it's not a pleasant thing to go through Okay, I, I estimate I've had about 20 injections into my belly at this time, right? Um, just over a week, about 20 injections. And tomorrow they do the first pickup or retrieval or harvesting or whatever you want to call it. Um, I have so few eggs. Like, it's so, it's so bad. This one's not going to work. They're already talking about how they're going to change things for the next round. This is just going through the motions of it, I guess of like they have to do this and then work out what to do different next time. So tomorrow they sedate me, put a needle up my hoo-ha and get the eggs and then Friday put them back in with your sperm, right? Yeah. I'm so glad there's nobody around here hearing this conversation. <laughs> He's just talking about how we just pretend talking about fried eggs. Fried Yeah, how do you like yeah, your eggs? Eggs and Friday. Fry eggs. <laughs> is that a is that a dad joke? Uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Good All job. right. I'm proud of you. Thank you, baby. It's okay. No matter what, I still love you. Thank you. You and you, you feel you feel like you're going crazy, and I think we had some arguments around this. Arguments that about nothing, but like you're so tense going through this and my emotions are all over the place and you're doing your best to like handle me with my emotions but like tempers can you know run short and so i think we had some some stupid arguments around that time i think and also at that time i started my um Oh yes. Tra body transformation. Yeah. So you were you had decided, you know, now is the time to get healthy and so a part of it that's the thing, part of it was like to support me as well, because you wanted to change your body and show that you could do something as I was going through these changes. Um, and also a doctor said like what I can do is being be healthy. healthy for healthy sperm. Yeah, and that's the best thing I could do at mm. the time. I wish I could do all the injection by myself for you, but no. <laughs> it, it, we, I couldn't because there's doesn't make me, you know. So you saw me going through so much pain, so you had to put yourself through pain as well. Yeah, it's for myself and for everything. Okay, it's early in the morning. Going back to the clinic for the first procedure of getting out my eggs. My little tiny eggs that there's not very many of. <sighs> okay. It's 
not just black screen, okay? It's inside. Um, it's still doing my blood pressure. You can hear my blood pressure thing. They put your le like your legs are up on the thing, like it's your whole <laughs> private parts are exposed, and then they do stuff to you. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we wait to see how many eggs, how many eggs there are. And you you already did your sample, right? I did it. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I did a good job. Jaheso. <laughs> Yeah, you want me to show it here? Do you do it into a cup? Yeah. Do you put a lid on it? Yep. No, good. So you're not giving the nurse, like, <laughs> this is cup. <laughs> <laughs> um. So our, our life wasn't normal at that time so not only are you now dieting and exercising and i'm having to you know inject myself as well and feeling so bloated and feeling so hormonal and emotional and in pain but you can't tell anybody what you're going through so we still had to carry on life as normal and i'm sure people are wondering why i was looking terrible and and this type of thing and i remember like I think a few times, you know, still having to go out and do socializing slash business stuff and going into the back room of a restaurant to in inject myself and only very close friends knowing that I was going through this and hiding it from other people. Not for any sort of shame reasons, just that if people know you're going through IVF, they're going to ask you even more, are you pregnant? And that's just too much to handle. It's too much to handle to have somebody asking all the time. So it's better that people just don't know. Of course, you're taking all the medicine and the injection. So you're bloated, but mm. people are saying, she's pregnant, you're pregnant. Oh, I, yeah, that was because I looked pregnant from being bloated. And so, you know, my belly was round and that. And then to have people, who were not close, they're not close friends to be like, oh, she's pregnant, she's pregnant. And then, no, I can't get pregnant. I'm going through something really emotional and physical, physically painful at the moment to try to have a baby in it. Oh, don't, don't assume a woman is pregnant, even if she looks like she's pregnant and she's bloated. Like, please, like, don't assume a woman is pregnant. Okay, back from the hospital. So I'm supposed to just, hello, just rest for the rest of the day, right? Mm. They said just sleep. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like, it just feels like a dream. It's not like general anesthesia. It's sedation. So just, like, I could feel them doing it, but just felt like it was a dream. Um, so... It feels like I've got period pain at the moment. And actually when I sort of woke up properly and they got me off the bed, I was kind of in a, I'm not gonna say a pool of blood, but like a, there was quite a lot of um, blood, but after that, hopefully there's not any more bleeding. So they've taken the eggs out. How many eggs were, were, were their baby? Three. Three eggs. Usually a woman would have 15 taken out at this time. So I guess for me it was less invasive because they only took three eggs out. But they only took three eggs out because that's all my ovaries could uh, produce. Um, and then did they say definitely on Friday we're going back in or they let no, us know? They let us know. They let us know when we go back in to get it um, put back in. On a whole, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, but we'll just see how my recovery is now. Okay, so you said the hospital called this morning? Yes. What did they say? They say you have two eggs. Embryos? Embryos. Okay. Yeah. That, so at least two. Could it possibly be three? Three. But we know 
actual the day they are going to put it in. They'll tell us yeah. what's. So at, at least two. two are going in. Possibly three. Yay, our eggs and sperm. Yes. Good job, guys. Good job. You came together. <laughs> I did a good job. I didn't drink. Yeah, yeah, you so, didn't drink alcohol. You made healthy sperm. So now I can drink. No, you wait. No. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> we'll probably have to do it again and again and again. Doing the embryo transfer, it was simpler than I thought, but also terrifying at the same moment. Now you weren't there when they, they did it. Okay, it's Friday morning and we're going to the hospital because we have at least one embryo. So that's exciting. I'm feeling excited. I know it's still like a low chance, but um, I'm, I'm feeling good. Look at this, it's snowing. I hope this is a good sign. Wow, snow. Um, you have like the doctor, or maybe even two doctors and the nurses and there's a lab technician through like another window thing and your legs are up like this and you are awake for it. I think you can be sedated but I was awake for it and you know that the doctor this is putting this precious, precious embryo. I think we, at first we had two embryos. Putting them into your uterus. And there's a nurse counting as they're doing it because they have a limited amount of time. And I did not want to breathe, but you have to breathe, right? And I felt like every breath I was going to make it harder for the doctor. And I've heard that a lot of IVF like results come down to how good the doctor is as well and so I wanted to just not breathe I just wanted to stay still but then I'd have to breathe and then it felt like every breath was so was too big and then I was causing problem like that and it was so stressful um, very strange and then I had to lay down for one hour and now I have to be really careful for the next, mm. how long? How long do I have to be really careful for? Mm, well, five days. Five days. Um, and they put two, two in. So they collected three eggs and two of them, two of them were viable. So yeah, let's see, how are you feeling? I'm hoping. Hopeful, that's what she said. She said, be hopeful and pray and don't get too much stress so you can't give me stress no stress from you <laughs> yeah. um it's i don't know it's a strange it's a strange feeling to know that you know like i i could be pregnant in a few days or i might not so it's crazy crazy weather today it's, it's like snowing. it's a snowstorm yeah. um so it's kind of cool, it's also kind of crazy. Um, I think we should just eat a meal in the hospital instead. Yeah. Instead of going out, we'll stay here while we can. They say you can do no more work. Mm. I mean, no more, you know, Stuff. things, what you do. Okay. And you don't go to public baths. No. Yeah, they said hot baths and stuff. I can't do. Yeah. And then no sex. No sex. Well, it's, yeah. that's the funny thing. You make a baby without sex. <laughs> that's possible. Yeah. So you can explain to your children. We never need to tell our children about sex. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. But then... You, you just wait, you wait for about two weeks, ten, 10 days to two weeks to go back to the hospital and have a blood test and to see whether all this, everything that you've done, whether, whether it worked. And you wonder, you wonder, are you pregnant? You wonder if 
it's growing inside of you and I really did I really felt like there was life inside of me at that time. I, I really felt it. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to be feeling at the moment. Uh, I just feel kind of in a daze. And it's just, I mean, just waiting, waiting. Is it the 21st they check? 21st. 24th. The 24th. They'll do a blood test and check. So I haven't been outside since we came back from the hospital on Friday so it's now Sunday um, I mean it's good because it's freezing it's like the coldest the coldest weekend of winter so far but I'm going a little bit stir crazy just being inside the whole time being forced to be inside but I'm staying calm I'm not getting stressed and I'm just hoping Hoping that these embryos will stick. So we'll see. You know, even being raised in a household, like a feminist household, never having pressure on me to get married and have kids, you know, my mum was never like that. But when you find out you're infertile as a woman, it is really hard and devastating, and you feel shame and you feel guilty and you feel that stigma because of society you know women who were very fertile are like raised up and praised in society and if you can't have children there's something wrong with you and there's this sort of undertone like feeling that it's your fault somehow you know people people you know they they think that they they think that women who can easily get pregnant are you know they've done something right and then women who can't they've done something wrong where most of the time it is just the luck of the draw it's just how things turned out you know you can be really healthy and in great shape to help your fertility but when it comes to things like diseases like endometriosis there's nothing that you can really do in that situation it's just bad luck it's just how things have turned out and yet why as women do we feel so much guilt and I didn't find out I was infertile until after we were married and I wish I could have given you the choice but I would uh, have the same decision it doesn't matter no, I just wish, I just wish I could have told you at the beginning, you know. No, you didn't know, and even though you would know, it wouldn't change my mind. Thank you. <laughs> I remember like the first, one of the first times going to the infertility clinic in the hospital and looking at the sign that says infertility clinic and just thinking that, you know, this this is my failure as a woman and like why why am I thinking like that like the negative stuff that you absorb as a woman in society and then I just felt like a, a failure because I couldn't get pregnant okay today is the day so we're at the hospital and I just had a blood test to find out if I'm pregnant or not um, and we have to wait two hours right yes two hours uh, so I think we're gonna go to a cafe or something like that and then yeah we will we will find out um hopeful but also know that that's still only a 30 percent chance at this at this time so yeah Kitchener, we do. it's also one of the coldest days i think it's like minus 13. It's minus 13 now. yeah minus 13 minus 12 at the moment um so everything i do it always seems to be on the coldest days or when it's snowing <laughs> found out that I wasn't pregnant.
Um, okay, so we just got back from the hospital and I'm not pregnant. I mean, the thing was it was only going to be a 30% chance and you know that but you still have hope because you've, you've been through like a month of treatments and stuff to make this happen and then it's all for nothing. Um, and then you've got to start again and try and we don't know how many times how many times we have to do this and so we're hoping for the next time because there's a little bit higher chance right yes. next time I feel very sad you know we had two we had two viable embryos and they're gone so when people say IVF is hard I think really it's the emotional side of it that is hard the physical stuff is hard and annoying you know spending two weeks injecting stuff into your belly and all the other hormonal stuff and that that's hard but it's I mean I'm used to I'm used to my body feeling like crap anyway it's the emotional stuff that is hard we went to the hospital with hope and that we would be lucky and would be pregnant for the first time and not have to continue paying thousands and thousands of dollars to try to have a baby but it was expecting too much so now we start again yeah I think it's emotionally really hard yeah and I heard that the nurse said I'm not pregnant and yeah I just didn't want to believe what she said so I asked her again and she said uh, no, not pregnant. Mm. Because Hugh went in to check because we were waiting for them to call in the hospital. He just went in to check and she just got the results. And so you were told first. Yeah. And then you came back out to me. I could tell by how you were walking. I could tell already. And then you told me, you know, not this time. Because just waiting for phone call to yeah. get the answer was too hard. It's like torturing. Yeah, you, know. you can't. And you know, it was sort of two hours in between getting the blood test and then you know hearing. And it's you can't do anything. You can't concentrate. You're just waiting. And yeah. So hopefully next one. Next one. Yeah. Even when you know like you're not likely to get pregnant at the first round of IVF, of course you're hoping that you will, you're hoping that that will be it and then you won't have to go through that anymore but it was so hard finding out I'm not pregnant and then we waited another month before starting again and I felt that this time I felt like this time I really had to manage my emotions more and I started to think about it's okay if we can't have a baby we're still going to have a happy life together we have to make sure that we're happy whatever happens either way whatever happens we're going to be happy and so I started managing my emotions more like that and trying not to think about things too much as we went into the second round Um, okay, so they're starting me on something that's called like soft, soft IV, I, IVF. Um, so it's a little bit different this time. It goes over like three months instead of one month. Yeah. Okay. Um, so because my ovarian function is so bad. And then we found out that I had a chemical pregnancy. So it had stuck, but it hadn't, it wasn't viable. And... So I guess for a, you know, a moment, however long, a few days, I don't know, I was pregnant. And you know, this type of thing happens all the time. Women get pregnant and don't know because it's just, it doesn't stick properly, it doesn't work properly. But when you're going through IVF, you know every single thing that happens like that. And you feel the loss of that. You know, we had two embryos and we lost them. One of the worst things to say to 
a couple that is going through infertility and going through IVF is to tell them just adopt like and people hear this all the time and it is very very frustrating like please don't say this to people firstly adoption is not a simple thing it's not like going to the supermarket and picking up a baby and if it was like that that's very very unethical um, and the adoption process and applying for adoption can be a longer process than IVF so why not be trying IVF first anyway also there's still a lot of ethical problems around adoption as well some that were people only sort of starting to realize now like we're in South Korea and South Korea used to export babies for money before um, and this is so many ethical problems around that and we know that mothers wish they hadn't given up their children for adoption like that and now there's Korean adoptees coming back to Korea trying to find what their identity is there's so much more around adoption and so when people just reduce it to like just adopt that is also it, it's minimizing the the pain of a couple who you know may want to have their, their own child and it's also minimizing couples that do adopt like that process that they went through as well like it is not just this simple thing like that and then when people say like have you thought about adoption like of course you've thought about adoption it's one of when you find out you're infertile one of like you looking at options of course adoption is there like people don't need to <laughs> say it like it's like we haven't thought of it right yeah I think people think it's easy mm to just adopt and I don't know if they already adopt someone or I don't know usually I think people who um, didn't adopt the kids or mm. something they don't know. say just these things like that mm. like it's just easy easy it's, it's not, a not easy yeah. thing and I'm thinking about it you know even it's in the future it's still, still on on the table you know but it's not a, a simple thing. Back to it. Hugh is getting my needles ready. Remember how to do it? Yeah. Oh, now I'm scared again. It's just one needle this time. It used to be two. Yeah. Sometimes it was three or four, but one needle. Because I guess because it's soft IVF. Okay. Done. It was okay. Thing. My ve my belly is still fat. Did you feel like you were like a doctor doing it? You remember, <laughs> I was wearing the kind of gloves and then doing some <laughs> sort of, uh, operation thing. But no, I'm just I'm mean, just saying like this now. But I wasn't easy because I'm not a doctor or nurse. Mm. But I have to do it, mm. and because this is only the way. And in the beginning, you were kind of scared. That's why I had to do it. I think I just burst into tears the first night of yeah. having to do that. Right. <laughs> but like, if I had to do it, I would have same situation. I, I mm. don't like to do it. That kind of things by myself. Mm. Uh, still, you, you got to do it so like the way they teach it. You still very quick, so you've got to like get get your confidence, and then. <laughs> yeah. We went to the hospital this morning um, for them to. They call it pick up, but it's pretty much harvesting eggs, right? Yeah. And so we were told we we're going to be doing this soft IVX, so three pickups, um, so they have enough eggs. But what actually happened? Actually, you have. Eight eggs. Eight eggs. So, yeah. when they checked a few days ago, it was it's like four. it was three to four. Yes, yeah, three to four. And then today they did it, and it was eight eggs, which is fine. That's like an actually a normal am amount, right? Yeah, it's not like it's just normal uh, women's. Mm. Um, yeah. What, what they would harvest, whereas before the last round of IVF, I was very, very, very bad ovarian function. Mm. Um, so they're going to just do it normally now, so when the embryos are ready, they're going to implant. Yes. 
so that's changed because I thought this was not going to happen for another three months. Another three months. <laughs> Finding out that it wasn't going to be like the three months anymore was kind of a big shock that they'd got enough eggs and, and were doing it just like, you know, normally now because I had changed how I was thinking about things so much, you know, I was like, it's even if I get pregnant, it's not going to be until later. So I'm focusing on these things at the moment. I'd made plans and then done this and then suddenly it's like, oh, in, in uh, you know, two weeks we're going to do the embryo transfer, it was, felt like everything was suddenly happening at once. Okay, so we are about to go to the hospital for second round of IVF, so this is second implanting, right? Yes. And this time it's um, five day embryos, right? Yeah, five so days. So we don't know how many they're putting in, but these are embryos that are more is established, mm. I guess. Um, so there's a higher chance this time of me getting Pregnant. I don't know, like I don't want to be excited mm. because who knows, I wish Maybe but, you don't want to be disappointed I just want to hope Yeah But I don't want to mm. disappoint it later Yeah I am your father Maybe, maybe you will be a father Did it, so I've got to lay here for an hour. So they put one, one embryo in. Um, so originally six, six became embryos, but then they did it for five days because the embryos are stronger if they reach the five day mark. And then by the five day mark, there were two, um, two left. So they decided that because my situation is so bad, they might not get another situation um, of having an embryo that's this strong so they froze one and they put one in today so no chance of twins are you disappointed yes you wanted you wanted twins yes it's okay it's better to have one healthy baby that's okay so you're literally just laying here and hoping this sticks hoping this this one sticks just here next to me it's just is it an hour or half an hour I need to wait? Mm. An hour. I've got to lay for an hour. The ticking clock. Where's the clock? Yeah. Ticking, ticking clock. Just waiting, waiting, hoping this, this little guy sticks, stick to me. Also, you still have other body stuff going on at that time. You know, there is uh, hormonal stuff that you have to still put up your thing. You're still very uncomfortable in a lot of ways. Um, the whole time your body just feels horrible and you, you don't feel like yourself because of all the, the hormones and everything like that. Okay, we are at the hospital and today we are Just back second round yeah. to find out if I'm pregnant. Uh, or not so we'll see I have mixed feelings it's been very hard to just manage expectations like not be too excited but then not be too negative and like I, I really don't know what's the best way to sort of manage emotions like like this so um, and of course I've been very emotional because um, I have all these hormones being you know put into me and everything like that They're so quick. It's like two seconds. Ta -da. Done. Ta -da. But now we've got to wait for how many hours? Two hours. Two, two hours waiting. So let's go to a coffee shop.
네네 아 진짜요? 네 Not pregnant? Yeah, they say you're pregnant. What? <laughs> 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 But why was your face so... Why was your face so... I don't like, know, I don't know. <laughs> what are you crying? <laughs> 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 oh, I'm pregnant. <laughs> You're gonna be a daddy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right? I'm just in shock. I, I just I, I don't know how to react. Oh really? I'm only crying because you're crying. Finding out that we we're pregnant, like so, so happy, but terrified at the same time, right? Like, like this was it. It's like we've been going through all this to get pregnant, and then to be pregnant, to be pregnant sooner than I thought that we could possibly be pregnant was just crazy. One week since we went to the hospital, right? One yeah. week since we went to the hospital, and because I've never had a pregnancy test like this. Like I did it at home. I just wanted to see for the first time like this. And I, st I still can't believe it. Like I, it has the two things like this. And it, and it says here, Imshin, which is pregnant. <sighs> Look at this. This is the first time in my life. It really, really feels like confirmation. Before it was just like them. It was people telling us, right? It was people telling us. You know, they could have made a mistake or something like that. But now, literally, a test at home. Look how strong that is as well. You're gonna be a daddy. You're gonna be a daddy. <laughs> I still don't know yet. Don't know. Like, it's, it's real or not. Yeah, it doesn't feel real, doesn't feel real yet. Mm. Mm. Okay, we're back at the hospital and I had my very first ultrasound but you can't really see anything yet right mm. it's the embryo sac but you can see the the embryo sac here what was the doctor saying to you like yeah it'd be nice to you <laughs> i'm so glad the doctor is like be nice to your wife <laughs> yeah so still got to take the that medicine for a while right yeah another two weeks and then we come back in two weeks and are they checking the heartbeat then heartbeat and then might see Maybe. might see more so we've got to hang on for another two weeks until we sort of get to the point where we're confident uh, yeah okay. going through IVF you find out very very early on that you're pregnant so it's still difficult stage and there's still like a lot of miscarriages that you know women can have uh, miscarriage and you know sort of it's two weeks after the embryo transfer that you find out so you're only two weeks pregnant mm. and that is still so risky so you're happy but it's not like being you know being like a month or two pregnant and then finding out and you know things are probably going to be okay you still you, you can't tell that many people accept your immediate family Come on. I want to know if you're a boy or a girl. 
Boy? Definitely boy or just thing? Because this region. My mother in law had a dream that it's a boy. <laughs> Two nights ago. Oh. <laughs> so I'm very curious if she oh. is right. <laughs> It's here. It's <laughs> yes. Told you it's a boy. <laughs> so through my pregnancy, I was changing by getting bigger, and you were changing by getting slimmer, skinnier. skinnier. Yeah. yeah, you're sort of like balanced out at the moment. <laughs> um, but you, you think your face was changing so much. So we were both going through, going through some big body, body changes. I was. Uh, I wore your clothes and you wore my clothes. <laughs> That's right, we switched Because sides. I was uh, big and then getting skinnier and then you yeah. were skinnier and then you were getting bigger. Oh, whoa, there we go. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm bundle. I'm bundle. It's like be quiet, Daddy. You're a bundle. I'm bundle. Oh, oh, I'm bundle. I'm oh, Tananda. I'm bundle. First trimester was a little bit hard, and second trimester was like a, a bit better. But coming into the third trimester was when we started to worry a little bit, and I had placenta previa which means my placenta was very low over my cervix and when they find that out they're quite reassuring that you know usually the placenta moves up it's not too much to worry about um, but it was something to worry about and my placenta didn't move where it was supposed to move the scariest day of my life was at 28 weeks tw being 28 weeks pregnant and I woke up in the morning and I just felt like something was wrong and I got out of bed and I saw that blood was coming out of me and I ran to the bathroom leaving a trail of blood and the bleeding wouldn't stop and I stood in the shower and the blood was coming out of me and you stood at the door and you were very calm and you're like I'm gonna call the ambulance but I was I think I was screaming I was screaming seeing this blood because it was still so early and I thought I'm losing the baby we've been through all of this and now I'm losing the baby and I can't believe how calm you were in this situation like you really like took charge and you called the ambulance and you know they were checking things in the ambulance going to the hospital and luckily the hospital is not too far from us and went into the maternity ward and started to feel a bit better once I was in the maternity ward and they were like it's okay it's going to be okay and they put me on medication to stop <laughs> are you okay <laughs> are you okay <laughs> They put me on medication to stop uh, the stop me from going into labour because I was starting to have the labour pains that, and I'm bleeding because my placenta is so low down as well and that it's affecting everything down there and the baby was fine, baby was okay but my terrible crappy stupid body was the problem the cause of everything. <laughs> She's, we are just checking that we do the prenatal para. Hopefully she will be okay. It's 28 weeks. Yeah. Still no way to go. So stay, stay strong. Stay in there, baby. Stay. I'm proud of you, baby. You both babies. Wake up. Wake up.
You don't know. So I'm at the hospital. Nicola is uh, in the hospital. And Nicola's mom is here. Stay inside. Yeah. Finally, we go home. I'm going. I'm going home. You're going home. You happy? I'm, I just want to get home. I'm not comfortable until I've left the hospital. Okay. I stayed in the hospital for uh, 11 days. I spent the next uh, month really just being uh, at home. And the doctor said it's not a case of if you start bleeding again, it's when you start bleeding again. So I knew it could happen at, at any time. And the doctors, she said she just wanted me to get past 34 weeks. If I could get past 34 weeks, it would be okay. I saw that kind of situation only in the movie or dramas. Mm. And when I saw it, it's like, you know like how hard it was, the, or the process of getting pregnant and Finally got pregnant and suddenly, you know, getting so much blood and just, you know, worrying about if we lose him, like, mm. that's really painful, so I just go you, you are in no, panic and I was panicking. if I just do the same thing, then who can take over this situation so I had to be calm but the time it was oh the worst God. the worst feeling do, 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 do. Mm, baby mm, baby hi baby yeah there you are at 33 and a half weeks that was when the bleeding started again and I almost was calm in that situation situation before was horrible really really horrible but at that I was almost 34 weeks so I knew it's almost okay and I knew I could get to the hospital so the bleeding started and the bleeding did not stop um, so we went I was in hospital, I was in the maternity ward and they're just waiting to sort of see what's happening and the bleeding didn't stop so the next the next day bleeding really really didn't stop I think it was getting worse and so they put me in for an emergency c-section so that was about six weeks six weeks early so you he, he wasn't going to be full term for another six weeks, um, but he was coming out now. Are you okay? So we might have, you know, operation tonight. Because I won't stop bleeding. But I just want you and the baby is healthy. Thirty, almost thirty-four almost weeks. Thirty-four weeks. Okay, Nicola is here, and it's thirty-four weeks, almost thirty-four weeks. Yeah, we came out here yesterday because she got blood. So anyway, um, we don't know if we are going to, have, you know. Yeah, we test here, testing at the moment. Um, we don't know if we are going to have operation today, but I think more likely we will have. Okay. Yeah, hopefully both of them are okay. I love you. Love you. Love you. Love you too. I don't know, maybe we'll meet us soon. Yeah. Okay. So now we are going to have operation. Should be okay. Babe is coming. Can you see you soon?
Going into an emergency C-section is still terrifying and I cried as I was going in. The nurses were so wonderful and lovely and then when they were doing, uh, you know, because I'm awake for it but I can't feel, like, they were very calm and chatty and I didn't feel like, you know, I was in danger or he was in danger. He was just very early and when they pulled him out I could hear him crying but I couldn't see him because they rushed him away because he had problems breathing of his lungs and so he was gone he was gone from my body but I couldn't see him and I couldn't see him until the next day at six o'clock six o'clock in the evening and I never got to experience you know the when they pull the baby out and they put you know natural birth and the baby is on your chest and you can see them right away I didn't I didn't experience that. My first experience of him was looking at him in the the incubator in the humidity crib the next day. And that was and I couldn't I couldn't touch him but I could see him. I was so happy to see him but I just felt like this journey is not over yet, you know, we have our baby but still some things to go through. I saw him, but he was tiny and mm. like, really tiny. And um, seeing him was like really surprising and happy. But at the same time, I was worried: is it okay? Is it okay? Mm. We could only see him once a day, so I would go into the ICU and see him and just look at him <laughs> in in the humidity crib. And the time would go so fast. What are you doing? I'm waiting to see him. <laughs> I'm so happy to be married to you and to go through it with you because you've been so supportive. All the way, so supportive through IVF and pregnancy. And then the last bit of our journey, the NICU, the NICU. Oh, he was in the hospital for a month before he could come come home with us. He got bigger and he got stronger and all those problems uh, sort of fixed themselves and then finally the day came that we could bring him home and that was that was the first time I felt I could allow myself to be really happy and I'm, those first few weeks I was just so so happy even though of course sleep deprived and and everything like that but I felt like now is now is the time that we have a baby and we can be happy together. Yeah, I was so happy bringing him home and mm. now we are really parents. Really parents. Really mother. <laughs> we are really mother. Yeah. So I hope this video helps people understand more about IVF and what it's like to go through it, whether you're going to have to go through it yourself or if you have friends going through it just to understand that it is um, a long process and we were very lucky uh, to get pregnant second round and there's so many people going through it many 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 times and that is way more difficult than our experience as well so even our experience was difficult there's people going through way way more so please be sensitive you know and be sensitive about what questions you ask people and be sensitive about what somebody might be going through. It's such a private and personal pain but I wanted to share our journey so that people could understand it more. And now we have Yule. We, yes, have, we, we have we have our baby boy. <laughs> He's very healthy and, and strong. Yes, yes. Even after everything and coming too early and everything like that, he is healthy and happy and wonderful. Thank you for supporting our family. Thank you to everybody who has supported us over the years and I'm really grateful that we could uh, share our story with you and subscribe to us to see more videos about our life together, our intercultural life together with us and our son Yul um, and more videos about living in Korea and we'll see you later. Bye! Bye, thank you. Thank you, bye! Yes, thank you. <laughs>
Ein 